Hey, Katara, what's going on? Rob Sesterdino, congratulations on your run here this season. Uh, how are you doing today? I am, you know, shockingly more emotionally put together today than I expected to be, honestly. Yeah. Okay. Um, it was just a really great run that you went on here this season. And, and honestly, I felt like in the first like 30 minutes, I'm like, okay, I think that, you know, this could be Katara's night. Cause I really felt like that you were saying everything that the audience was thinking like the whole way through. Felt it. Oh my God, Rob. I, I knew it. I, I was like, I can see every single step of the game that's yes. going to happen next. And yeah. Ah. Yeah, I think that that's uh, one of the things that was so fun about you is I feel like that you were saying a lot of the things that people at home were thinking, and especially when it's like, hey, you're going to let these two go to the end? And, you know, you you turned uh, Jake around, and then you had so many great insights uh, all along the way. How were you able to sort of, like, see the game from that perspective? Um, I think a variety of reasons. One is just my life. I've been living you know, in survival mode my whole life. And we got a little taste of that um, in the show. But, you know, I've been kind of in a world where you've got to watch, you got to look, you got to see if you're not constantly looking and alerting and being like, what's happening here? Why are they doing that? You're not going to survive. And that's how I've able to get where I am and, and get so far in life is being able to see that. And then in Survivor, I had been doing that the whole time. I was on the outs with my tribe from original Bello days and the new Lulu days. So I had been looking and been like, okay, what do I need to do? What's gonna happen next? And even when I um, when I turned on Caleb at day 12, I did the exact same thing I did at the final five. I called, I mapped out the whole game. I looked at it and I said, if I go with Rebus, I can help them knock out all these Bellows. I will be voting with Bello so they won't know it. Um, and then at some point, Reba's going to turn on each other and they're going to need Katura to be those votes. All the big dogs will fall. I'll be standing at the end. Okay. I want to talk through that final five vote because it was such a huge moment in the episode. So from your perspective, um, you felt like that. Okay. So Jake is going to then he's going to play the idol on himself and those votes are yeah. going to go somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, Jake kept saying he was going to play the idol on himself and everything in my body kept saying he's lying. He's lying. He's, it, I didn't know what he was going to do, but I knew he was up to something. Yeah. And you could tell. Like, oh, was... I could tell. I mean, I don't even know if it was really conveyed in last night's episode, but I worked on him for hours. Like it was like all afternoon. I had been like, Jake, it's gotta be. And then initially he was so convinced it had to be Julie. And when I mapped out everything for him, it took a long time still for him to come around and be like, okay, I got you, Katura. So that was already in my mind that he yeah. felt strong about his original plan. And then it was Jake. And Jake and I have had this history of him proposing a plan that I'm like, this is the plan. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it does, we never had this. And I was so afraid that he was so blindsided by, I got to make a flashy move. I got to do something big that he would once again see past but the realness of what needs to happen. And we're at five. I couldn't risk Jake doing that yeah. again. Yeah, I know. It's um, like, it was so funny, but also like, so, so sad. And there was so much like poetry in that the two of you, like, I know everybody wants to talk about uh, Bruce, but really the relationship was like you and Jake, that you yeah. two were together, like every yeah. single day together. Every single and day you, for 25 days. You never got on the same page. Never. And I think that's a testament to like, just how our relationship was like, yeah. We would try, but we're just fundamentally thinking differently at all times. And I say it, I think on like episode one, day two, I'm like, I'm not getting strategic threatening vibes from Jake. Like that wasn't the vibe he was giving me. And it kept getting reiterated to me along the game to the point where it's final five. Everything in my body is saying alert, alert. Jake's lying. Mm -hmm. He's going to do something. And at this point, I know D is for sure writing my name down because Jake has told them that he has an idol, which I'm also like, why would mm -hmm. you let now that now everybody knows that the flashy move with the idol would be not telling them. And then they vote for Jake and then we cancel it. So it was already like, I am a hundred percent sure I'm getting votes. And at tribal, uh, Julie and D kind of spoke a little bit about, you know, sadness and I don't want to let somebody go or something. And so I thought they were like 
crying because they're like, I'm ready to write Katura's name down. So it was that plus me being like, mm -hmm. it's been 34 years, Rob, of me having to listen to my body. And I may not always be able to articulate why, but it saved me like 99% of the time and like yeah. real life situations. So I just, I was, I begged Jake. I want, I was staring in his eyes. I've never looked into a white man's eyes that long. Like I was <laughs> like, Jake, please. Like I, I want every part of me wants to believe you. I want this to work. You know, um, I just think that he thought it was a better move. Mm -hmm. Keep me out the loop about saving me, which I'm like survivor one-on-one. -on -one, you don't let people feel like they're going to get voted out. Like they're, they're going to feel up against the corner. And I, I mean, I'm not blaming Jake, by the way, like I own it. It's yeah. I, I deal with that every day. I'm like, you dropped the ball. Like you did this. I let fear take over. And I, I, you know, I take that. I own that. I let fear take over because in reality, this wasn't the life or death situation that I'm used to outside in the world. This wasn't alert, alert, you know, something bigger and more extreme could happen. This was, you might get voted out in Survivor. But in the moment, that was like the biggest thing. It was like, I'm so close. I'm not going to lose it for this. And Julie was the safe vote. What would happen if D got voted out at the final four? Oh, oh. Ooh, I would I would walk. Are out you of... the winner? Well, okay. <laughs> so in my mind, if D oh if D gets voted out at four. I'm sorry, five, five. I'm sorry. At five. Uh if D gets voted out at five, I was a hundred percent sure that Austin and Julie would make fire. Because if Austin won immunity, he would be like, I need to make a flashy move and you know, be Julie mm -hmm. and fire, vice versa. In both of those situations, Jake and I are getting a free seat to the final tribal council. And my ideal final tribal council, based on how things were falling in the game, was sitting beside Jake and Austin. So yes. I felt very confident that Jake wouldn't get votes and that I would be like, I wasn't concerned about him taking votes from me. And with Austin, in my mind, at that point in the game, I viewed him as number four of the Reba Four. So I was like, D and Drew are the strategic heads. They got to go. No world. I win sitting beside D or Drew. Mama Julie is Mama Julie. We got the deep emotional connection. She's got to go. People are going to be pulled to her. And I didn't feel like Austin had either strong strategic chops or that strong emotional pull. And I would be able to say, look, I get it. Austin had a great game, but I was in the damn trenches. I've been fighting yeah. since the beginning and like walked through how I called every single moment of the game. I saw every single thing happening. I called it, I made it happen. And like, I mean, I'm not going to give you the full speech now, but let me just tell you the bullet points were damn good. And We'd I love to hear very, it sometime. Yeah. I felt very confident that if I didn't win, it would be like a narrow margin and maybe I lost by yeah. you know, one or two votes. And you were the one Bella, and Bella was like kind of a disaster, but you were the one Bella that said, look, look, I'm going with the Rebas, okay? From the point that we had like that at the final 12, where it was the split tribal council that, you know, how early on did you know, like, hey, like uh, Bella, uh, this ain't it? Oh, day seven, <laughs> day seven. I, I can tell you exactly. That was the day I was like, you got to drop them as soon as you can. Like, yeah. I just remember we had that big challenge. It was like pushing this crate and getting things through a maze or whatever. And when people ask me like, what's your craziest, hardest challenge, even with the whole game passing, that's the challenge I think back to the most because the hierarchy in the tribe had already been set and Katura was at the bottom and Bruce was at the top. And it felt there was no way for me to smile and get in. I kept smiling. I kept being sweet. I kept being cool and fun and hiding that I was feeling you know, frustrated and, and really triggered and bothered. I hit all of that and it still wasn't enough. And it was like, I keep trying to get in with these people and they're not letting me in. And on that challenge, I remember Bruce was just like yelling at me. Like you don't really see it in the episode, but he was just yelling. And then Kendra started like yelling at me. And I felt very much like, got it. Like this is, this is the, this is the status. It, we, we, we can say exclude Katura and that's okay. And I just felt you can't have an alliance with people who you don't feel good with. Like, I'm totally down for being like, I don't trust you. You don't trust me, but let's work through it together for the next two or three votes. But if you're like comfortable excluding me constantly, repeatedly not including me on key information, and I'm feeling like crap, like I'm getting, 
you know, the mm -hmm. shortening of the stick, I gotta go. And so I was, I was like, as soon as there's a tribe swap, I'm, I'm jumping ship. And then the tribe swap happened, and it was the exact same. Exact same. And, yeah. like, <laughs> and then only difference was Kendra, who was my little bit of ray of light. Like I, yeah. I felt closest to Kendra, but I was feeling that she was starting to say, "I'm sorry, Katura, like self preservation." I got to get on with the main group. And I told her, I, I'm not mad at that. Yeah. But if I lost Kendra and I did, then it was like, oh no, now we're, I'm just in Bruce land. Um, and Kelly's with Bruce and Jake's with Bruce. And they're like, they're not letting Bruce go. Right. Rightfully so. Kelly, make, it makes sense for Kelly to stick with Bruce. It makes sense. I mean, Jake's just was infatuated with Bruce. So I was like, there's no me getting in this block. And then you add Caleb connecting to that block, getting to, being able to get in with the block better than me. Literally. Yeah. I was like, oh, yeah, I'm, mm, I'm, I'm, I'm ready. So it, I had been waiting for a long time. And then like at 12, it just slapped me in the face. You keep trying. You yeah. keep trying with these people and it's not working. I, I'm loving hearing all this. Uh, I, I know, got the I'm signal. Sorry. We got to wrap bit. up. Let me, but, let me. Okay. But uh, that, so let me let you get to your other press here today, but would love to oh, hear right. more your perspective on all of this at some point down the road. Okay, Katara. Bob, you know, I got you. I have okay. so much to say. I'm so happy to hear you say that. Okay. All right. Talk it to you soon. Okay. You. Bye. All right, take care. Bye.